Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. Today is Communion Sunday, so if you're watching at home, please know that. If you want to partake with us, have bread and juice available. As I explained last week, I was going to check with my brother about uh, what, if he had set up any memorial uh, locations for my uh, nephew, and he said he had not. But my nephew was um, very much concerned and active with the homeless. So if you want to give something in honor of my uh, nephew, it would be to uh, somebody or group that's working with the homeless. They did catch the man. Uh, he ran a red light and traffic uh, cameras picked up his uh, vehicle. So they do, do have the guy in jail without bond. Also notice in your bulletin, the last hymn is printed wrongly. We're not singing the same hymn twice. Instead of 340, we're singing 338. O oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Uh, Martha Nell is looking for people that uh, could help her provide meals for Sarah, Margot's daughter. And if you want to partake in that ministry with her, get with Martha Nell. And Sue Ellen is planning to buy the food items for our Pre Presbyterian Disaster Assistant backpacks that we're creating. And if you want to help her, she's looking for donations of money so she can buy the food items. Our youth will be taking those to Ferncliff on Friday, July 16th. And you'll also notice around that there's some information about Vacation Bible School coming up on the 29th and start praying for that in our youth. Psalm 11 tells us that the Lord is in his holy temple and sees what people do. God loves those who do what is right, good, and just, and thus the upright will see God's face. So let us spend a few moments in silence thinking about ourselves being in the very presence of this holy, just, and righteous God as we listen to the prelude.
as we call one another to worship. Psalm 72 directs us to rejoice and be glad. God reigns from sea to sea, pities the weak, and rescues people from oppression and violence. May we be upright, faithful, kind, and good, and be a blessing to God, to one another, and others. Let our worship shape us. Amen. We have joyfully proclaimed in song that Jesus is the King of Kings, our King. But we know that we do not stay aligned with Jesus as King. We go our own way, we sin. But with trust and confidence in what Jesus has done to bring forgiveness to us, we confess our sins together, recognizing our need for forgiveness and our need for Christian fellowship to live as the way God would have us to live. With that in mind, let us pray the prayer of confession together. Faithful, righteous God, you want us to love others, show hospitality, serve one another, and be good stewards. Yet we confess we do these things poorly and inconsistently. Forgive us, we pray. Help us to do everything so that you may be glorified. Amen. Paul explains about our salvation through Jesus in Romans 6 and gladly proclaims, Here is the message of hope and of transformation. If we are united to Christ, 
Our sinful nation, nature has been destroyed and the power of sin no longer controls us. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another. If we can have the adults return to the pews and all the children to gather here up front for a children's message. Do we have all the children up here yet? Almost. <laughs> We're all child, child, children of God, right? <laughs> I, got, I got three. Claire? <laughs> uh, okay. I'll try again. Okay. All right. Good morning, y'all. Is it, boys, is it hot enough for you? Yeah, it's hot. It's, it's really hot outside, isn't it? Isn't it? We're, we're, what, ha what, happens, what happens when it's... Yeah. Oh, the candle's on, yeah. What, what happens when it gets really hot and you're outside and you've been playing? What happens to you? What, do, 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 do you, 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 you get thirsty? What happens to you, Milo? You can get a boo-boo. You did? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, but you got hurt. Well, that happens sometimes. But what else happens if you've been out running and playing in the sun? What's something that you really, really miss? You might get sunburned. You might get sunburned. But what do you need when you've been out working? Maybe, maybe, maybe Martha Nell knows what she always needs. So Helen might know. What do you need? water feel, feel that feel 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 this yeah I, I hear you Jameson feel this can you feel this what do you think is in there why is it cold well, it, 
you're exactly right. This is something that is very special to me. I used to take this on backpack trips with me, and it's filled with cold water. Yeah, okay. You want to? You can hold it for me while before we pour it. You, you sit down and, and just listen for a second. Okay. Now, I used to take that on my on my camping trips with me because when I was hot and tired, that no, there's no sound. There was no nothing better than a drink than a drink of cold water when I was thirsty. And we're going to talk about how important it is if you meet somebody who's thirsty. What do you what should you do for them? If you meet a thirsty person, what do you what should you do for them? You should give them a drink of water, right? Yeah. And and that's yeah, you know, a juice would do, but water's the first thing you should give them to keep them. They call it hydrated. Everybody knows that word. They, we're hearing it a lot these days because it's so hot, and you want them to be. You, yeah, food. Yeah, and you can eat with them, and that's another way to show hospitality. There's all kinds. With water and with food. And tomatoes. <laughs> and what else? Yeah, and watermelon. Oh, wow, I want him to show me hospitality. I'm, I'm in I'm really good shape. So I want you to do something for me. Martha, now, can you help us? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna share this cold water with all of you, okay? Because if you're hot and thirsty, a hot and thirsty person wants cold water, and you know what else we're going to be doing to help people who, are, who need something? You need to be cool. You love fruit, good. You could give them, those to people, too. We're going to hear about how we can be hospitable to people. Yeah, yeah. We're going to hear about today about what it means to be God's children, helping other people. Yeah, have a drink and have, think how make how does what if you were thirsty? Oh, he's not thirsty. Being hospitable to people shows that you are showing God's love, and that's one thing Jesus asked us to do. He asked us to give drinks to the thirsty people and food to the hungry and fruit and all kinds of good things. Let's pray. Let's pray, Jameson. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Okay, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, you can pray with me. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, <laughs> dear Jesus, help me be a person who shows love to other people by welcoming them, by giving them water when they're thirsty, by giving them food when they're hungry. Help me to show your love in this world. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. As we prepare to read and listen to the word of God, <clears throat> let us pray. O oh Lord, take away the distractions around us and from our minds. Help us focus upon you and your word. Press the truth of scripture upon us. Nudge us from lethargy and sin and encourage us. For your word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Amen. As Sue Ellen said, today's theme is being hospitable, being kind. And our Old Testament text shows us that God put kindness and caring for guests and strangers in the very law of Israel. In Exodus 22, verses 21 through 22, and then skipping to 23, verses 1 and 9, this is what we read. You shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt. You shall not abuse any widow or orphan. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not, jo not join hands with the wicked to act as a malicious witness. 
you shall not follow the majority in wrongdoing when you bring bear witness in the lawsuit. You shall not side with the majority so as to pervert justice, nor shall you show partiality to the poor in a lawsuit. When you come upon your enemy's ox or donkey going astray, you shall bring it back. When you see the donkey of one who hates you lying under its burden, and you would hold back from setting it free, you must help it set free. You shall not pervert the justice due to the poor in their lawsuits. Keep far from a false charge and do not kill the innocent and those in the right for I will not acquit, acquit the guilty. You shall take no bribe for a bribe blinds the officials and subverts the causes of those who are in the right. You shall not oppress the resident alien. You know the heart of an alien for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. And now we turn to the teachings of Jesus as found in Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Hear God's word. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. Nova gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple. Truly, I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> For the last few weeks, we have been looking at texts from Matthew chapter 10. Jesus sent his disciples out into the world and gave them the instructions of and warned them about the possible hardships that they would face. In this morning's verses, Jesus moves from the negative to the positive, the positive responses that they might receive by giving Jesus his message. Last week, we focused upon living by faith, not fear. Two weeks ago, we focused upon waiting and being compassionate. If we just had compassion, Diane said, mission would take care of itself. If we had compassion for the church, the church would take care of itself. This morning, we look at hospitality. Being hospitable, being friendly to and caring for the needs of guests, making others feel at home and at ease with us. Giving and receiving hospitality is another one of our job descriptions. Jesus begins this section by saying, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who has sent me. That's a very familiar principle in the ancient world and pretty much in ours as well. To show respect and deference to the ambassador shows respect and deference to the king. To receive an emissary is the same as receiving the one who sent the emissary. And to welcome and care for and listen to a messenger from a friend is the same as welcoming and enjoying the presence of that very friend. Rabbis had something similar to say. They wrote, he who shows hospitality to the wise is as if he brought the first fruit of the produce to God. He who greets the learned 
is as greeting God. In other words, Jesus' principle here is that if someone truly comes from God and it, they are being received, it is to receive God's very presence. Jesus first applies this principle to the original 12 apostles. If people welcome, receive, listen, and respected them, they would actually be welcoming Jesus and God, the one who sent Jesus. Listening to the original apostles was like listening to God and showing respect and deference and honor to the apostles was doing those things to God. Now, we do not have the original 12 apostles with us. We cannot literally receive and welcome them in our households, but we can do it spiritually. We can welcome, receive, and obey their teachings. And if we do that, we will be welcoming God in our lives. If we make scripture welcome and at home in our lives, we are welcoming and making God at home with us. Well, after mentioning the original 12 apostles, Jesus mentions the prophets. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. In the Bible, a prophet is one who speaks for God, not one who makes a prediction in, for the future. A prophet takes the previous pronouncements of scripture that God had given, applies them to the current situation of the people, and then tells people how to honor and respect God and obey previous scripture. Sometimes they do predict future events, but their primarily concern was to get have themselves and others obey and honor God. In that sense, any preacher, missionary, teacher, parent, or any of us can be a prophet. If we take God's word, applies it to a situation, people could hear our voice as if they're coming from God. All of us have read or in our reading the written word of God. We say that we follow the word of God, Jesus, and we can apply the things that we know about scripture and Jesus to our own and other people's life in a loving, thoughtful, and appropriate way. All of us can admonish, encourage, and correct others with scripture. And all of us can hear God speaking from another person and sometimes as we speak to them. While I was in seminary, I visited a young man, and I don't remember exactly what I said to him. He was discouraged about staying in college. His father had sent me to go speak to him. And I don't know what I said, except that I reminded him he didn't have to stay at that college. Well, many years later, he said, that he had heard the voice of God speaking through me that it was okay to leave home and family and go to another college where he was successful. I also know of a preacher who got tired of listening to his daughter's rant about the injustices of the world and how bad politics is so that he finally yelled at her, well, what are you going to do about it? That moment, she heard God speaking to her to go to graduate school and become a lawyer, and that's what she did. Through the Holy Spirit who is in us, any one of us can speak for God. And we can hear others speak 
we can hear God speaking to us through others. Nevertheless, we should not accept anybody's speech, even if they claim to be from God, as the word of God. It is only those that we know are from God. Those who have proven to be good appliers of scripture accurately and consistently. In our text this morning, Jesus says to listen to those and welcome the prophet in the name of a prophet. And that phrase, in the name of, means who are known and recognized as such. So, whoever welcomes a prophet because they are truly known and recognized as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And 1 John 4, 1 commands, Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. In this verse, Jesus says that whenever we support and assist the ministry of those who are truly speaking for God, we will be rewarded by God. And even though we might not be missionaries and preachers and counselors or seminary professors, God will reward us because of how we are supporting them, how we give assistance and encouragement to them. After, after mentioning those who speak God's word, Jesus goes on to mention those who live by God's word. Whoever welcomes a righteous person who is known and recognized as a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. The righteous are those who are in good standing before God in the community of God. The righteous have the praise of God and the community. They have good relationships with others. They keep their word. They fulfill their duties. The righteous do right things in the right way at the right time for the right reasons. For the praise of God and to help others. The primary way that we have good and right relationships and a good standing in the community is by giving hospitality. All of us can be hospitable. Thus, 1 Peter 4, 8 and 9 admonishes, Above all, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. So then by welcoming, encouraging, and supporting one another and other Christians, we will be blessed by God. At the very least, we will have God's approval and we will be welcomed into our eternal home with God. Jesus spoke about welcoming his apostles, those who speak God's words and those who live by God's word. He then spoke about giving water to the little ones, to those who seem insignificant, but who nevertheless love God's word. Jesus says, whoever gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is known as my disciple, I tell you the truth they will not in any way lose their reward. Giving a cup of cold water, especially if it's offered in the heat of the day, was not a little matter. It took some effort. To get a cup of cold water, someone, and that usually was a woman, or a slave, had to leave the house, go to a deep well, either in the village or outside the village, draw up the water, pour the water into a large jar, put the jar on the head and carry that jar on the head back home, and then pour it into a cup 
and give it to the person. It required some effort, took some time, but anyone could do it. So thus, Jesus is telling us that any service or personal sacrifice for the least of these, those who belong to Christ, will be noticed and rewarded by God. In other words, any cause, anything that brings up conscious hospitality in us will be rewarded. Later, Matthew 25 also tells us, Jesus also tells us, unconscious hospitality will also be rewarded. Those things that we didn't know that we were helping Jesus. Whenever we feed the hungry, give a drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, and visit the imprisoned, we do it to Jesus. And it keeps us from being condemned by Jesus. So then extending hospitality, kindness, and friendship to others, whether they are believers or not, we are being noticed by God and will be rewarded by God. Corey Ten Boom's father constantly took in guests into his house. And during World War II, that also meant bringing in Jews to the house, protecting them and hiding them from the Nazis. In her book, In My Father's House, Corey writes, many lonesome people found a place with us where there was music, humor, interesting conversation, and always room for one more at the oval dinner table. Oh, it's true. The soup may have been a bit watery when too many unexpected guests came. But it didn't matter. After the war, as Corey went around the whole world proclaiming God's message and the things that she had learned during her captivity in prisons under the Nazis' watch, she became dependent upon the hospitality of others. And she saw that as God's reward to her for the open hearts and open homes that was found in her father's house. Providing simple support, encouragement, and care to people who are official, recognized speakers of God, to those who live out God's word by doing what is good and right for society or for church to regular, unassuming believers, and even to the down-and-out marginalized people will bring a blessing to us from God. Let us welcome and make a home for God's word in our lives. Let us be hospitable to those who speak God's word to those who live God's word, to those who love God's word, and to anyone who needs a little encouragement and care. For any act of kindness, even offering a cup of cold water, can become so much more than a simple act of hospitality. It might provide us and others a blessing from God. Let us therefore be friendly, kind, encouraging, and hospitable people. If you are able, please stand with me and let us reaffirm our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh Lord, your word left the glories of heaven and moved into our neighborhood and enhanced our lives. You are full of loving kindness, patience, love, and grace. You are quick to forgive and will never abandon us. Yet you are also holy and just and will not allow sin to go unpunished. Help us, we pray, to be more like you, especially by being compassionate, merciful, gracious, and hospitable to one another and others. God, we pray for those who speak your word that they may speak it accurately and appropriately and see the results of their admonitions and teachings and become encouraged. For those who are righteous on a righteous mission, 
We pray that they may not become discouraged or sidetracked, nor that they become so zealous for their cause that they forget to be kind, gracious, and patient. For those who love you and your word but seem to have no special ability or mission, bless them as they support others who have a more visible and prominent part in your kingdom. May all be blessed and be a blessing to others. Help us to find ways to show kindness and love so that you may be glorified. We pray for the world that air and water quality be improved, that justice, righteousness, equity, mutuality, and compassion would flourish. We pray for refugees in their host nations, for those who have been displaced by war, drought, and storms. Provide resources, wisdom, and people so that respect and honor might be maintained. Families will be kept together and solidarity will not be disrupted. And that communities will find a, back, a path back to stability and hope. We pray for those that we know who are recovering from various illnesses and troubles, especially those who have financial struggles. For those who are looking for a new job, for those who are recovering from surgery, for those who are fighting cancer. For those who are experiencing an empty nest for the first time. For those who are lonely and or fearful. and for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We also pray for those who are on vacation. We ask that they are kept alert and safe and healthy in their travels. Enable them to have an enjoyable time and that they can return refreshed. We give you thanks for our country and ask that all our festivities this week be safe and enjoyable. Now hear us as we pray the prayer your son taught us praying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We show our love for God by caring for one another, by being kind, gracious, and hospitable to others, and by telling others about Jesus. In order to fulfill these responsibilities that we have, we need monies. We want to be a blessing to others because God has blessed us. And with that in mind, let us take an offering to the glory of God.
Lord, we offer up this offering to you as a token of the many ways we can support your work in the world and thereby give blessings and receive blessings according to the love, praise, glory, and honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. join me now with the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks forever. Let us pray. It is indeed right, our duty and our greatest joy to give thanks and praise. You did not withhold your treasures from us, but poured them out in overwhelming abundance for us. Sparkling streams, carpets of grass, inspiring skies and vistas, and displays of beauty, power, and wonder. You created all things good and offered them as gifts to us, but we have chosen our own way, disobeyed you, and marred your good creation with our sins. When we ignored your revelation and our responsibilities, you sent people to speak your word to us and then took on flesh and dwelt among us in putting the Holy Spirit in our hearts to make us your children and instruments of goodness and grace. We give you thanks for our country and our church. We are grateful for the freedom resources and places throughout our country, giving us many opportunities to help one another, to earn a living and to be healthy and to find recreation, inspiration, and friendship. We as 
especially thank you for Jesus, who lived among sinful people, endured a misunderstanding, ridicule, foolishness, torture, and death, providing us forgiveness of sins and a purpose for living and a community of faith. We ask the Holy Spirit to bless this bread and juice and use this time to recognize the cost of our salvation, to be assured of our place in your family, feel your loving presence, and commune with you and one another. Strengthen our trust in you, increase our faith, inspire us to service, and deepen our fellowship with you and our fellow believers throughout the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. On the night that our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he blessed it and he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten their supper together, he took a cup, and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, which is established by the outpouring of my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink. 
we may show your gifts to the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Go out as the children of God, speak and act for God. Do good and do what is right, so that you may be a blessing to others and may receive blessings from God. Amen. Amen. 